So, um, logs. Um, whenever people seem to talk about logs, they think, oh, God, this stuff is terribly hard. And it's really not. Like, I, I always found it, like, I won't say enjoyable, but it's nice to do. Like, this stuff is, can be tricky, but, like, it's just like a little puzzle. Here's a real basic way of looking at what a log is, right? The log base 2 of 8 is 3, okay? So here's the way you should think of it. The log base 2 of 8, 2 to the power of 3 gives you 8, as you know. Two. So what's that look like? So remember, 2 to the power of 3 gives you 8. That's why the log base 2 of 8 is equal to 3. Hopefully that diagram might help you understand it. And let's do a couple of little tricky ones. Now these really are higher level type of, type of questions. So um, hopefully I've tried some questions like these. But let's start off with an easy one. And let's go on to slightly trickier ones. But I'll show you a nice way to work them out. We're not going to use a calculator for this. So the log base 2 of 4. So 2 to the power of something gives me 4. So we know that should be 2. Because 2 to the power of 2 gives me 4. Similarly, 3 to the power of something gives me 81. Well, 3 squared, 3 by 3 to the power of 2 gives me 9, 3 to the power of 3 gives me 27, and 3 to the power of 4 gives me 81. So it's just like 3 by 3 by 3 by 3. So that is like 3 to the power of 4. So 3 to the power of something gives me 81, and that is 4. Okay, now let's look at a little bit slightly more obscure one. 8 to the power of something gives you 16. What could that possibly be? Well, if I wrote it like this, right? So 8 to the power of x gives me 16. Well, there is nothing really. Is there a number we could think of here that gives us that, right? And yeah, we could put this into our calculator and get it straight away. The reason why I'm showing you this is because when they get algebraic and they start having x's and y's, you need to figure things out. It's just, this is the way you should be thinking of them. So 8 to the power of something must give me 16. I can't think of anything there, but I do think of a number that's related to both these numbers, right? And that's the number 2. I know that 2 to the power of 3 gives me 8, yeah? And then I, I also know then in reverse, I suppose, the cube root of 8 gives me 2. So if you like, if I wrote this, right, 8 to the power of a third, this is just a number 2, isn't it? It's just like the cube root of 8, right? So maybe if I said this, right, and, oh, sorry, before I even go that far, I also know that 2 to the power of 4 then gives me the 16. So what if I said this? If I said 8 to the power of a third, which is 2, and I know this is the number 2, and I know if I put this to the power of 4, that will give me the 16 that I'm looking for. Right now, it's a base of eight. That's why I went there with the eight here because I, I had to go eight to the power of something. So I kind of wrote out this and started thinking about it and said, okay, I thought of a number related to both of these, which is two, and I know that the cube root of eight is two, and then that two to the power of four gives me the sixteen. Now, from your rules of indices, a power to a power, you don't add those; you multiply them. So therefore, I can actually bring these two powers together and say eight to the power of four over three is equal to. 16 and there you go I have it 8 to the power of something is equal to 16 therefore if you put this into your calculator the log base 8 of 16 is actually 4 over 3 so tricky another slightly tricky one here right so this is root 2 to the power of something um, should give me 4 so what could that be well, first off, we know as um, from experience that we don't we, square root is just a symbol, and we normally see a lot that written as two to the power of a half. Yeah. Now, we want to get two to the power of a half, but we want to get this stuff equal to four. Two to the power of a half is root two, but we do know that two squared is actually equal to four. So that's the number relating both of these. So how can I bring that up to get that equal to? So there's a couple of ways of thinking about this. You do know that if you put root 2 to the power of 2, that is actually 2, isn't it? It's like root 2 squared. We want to do that twice, though. So essentially what we want to do is root 2 squared, yeah, like this, again multiplied by another root 2 by root 2. Because this stuff here is 2, and this stuff here is also 2. 
and this 2 by 2 gives me the 4. So if you like, I have 4 root 2's multiplying each other. So therefore, root 2 to the power of 4 actually gives me that 4 I'm actually looking for. So yeah, I know it's a bit tricky, but um, it's just another way of thinking of it. It's a bit maybe abstract to some. I think it's just like tricky or fun ways of wake, working these things out. The more you practice them, the more you get them. So yeah, so we know that root 2 to the power of 4, just like 4 little root 2s, gives you actually 4 that you're looking for here. So therefore, the answer to this is actually 4. Okay, so remember it goes like this so yeah they're trickier ones we might look at some other tricky ones in another example in some longer questions but hopefully that major understands logs a bit better and takes the scary aspect out of them of course there's a whole rule set for logs of um where logs are multiplying and dividing and subtracting and all this type of thing how you bring them together and there's some nice little tricks that you can employ as well for tough logarithmic equations but that's for another video this is just a basic introduction